As we continue to push skyward and take on increasingly complex building projects, any investment in technology and building supplies and materials is important. A stronger and less porous concrete makes it possible to create structures that can withstand much heavier loads. This increase in strength opens up the possibilities of the types of structures that can be built. I'm going to give a brief overview into the processing, structure, and properties of ultra-high performance concrete. Some of the biggest challenges with the processing of ultra high performance concrete is the low water cement ratio. Uh, because of this, it's needed to be mixed in a uh, high shear mixer. There's an example of a high shear mixer here, which is a planetary mixer. It's able to deliver the energy into the mix to mix it with those low water to cement ratios. Um, also, because it, it requires such high qualities, quality controls with the, uh, the gradations of the mixes, Typically, contractors are not able to produce this in the, in the field, uh, and so you're going to end up buying the, the UHPC pre-mixed in, in sacks, and then the contractor is only going to add water and liquid admixtures to, to place the concrete. Uh, because of the, the low water cement ratios, it needs high range water reducing admixtures to help uh, control that water to cement ratio and because that it also becomes a, a self-consolidating concrete which doesn't need to be vibrated to be placed in and around um, reinforcing steel. That also helps it with with some of the other properties uh, that I'm going to get into. So with the structure you can see in the images here that the the particle packing is one of the key structural components of ultra high performance concrete. Uh, the largest ad, or aggregate size in UHPC is about the smallest. It's the size of the fine grain admixture, fine grain aggregates in normal concrete. And you can also see that by controlling the type of cement that goes into it, you're able to uh, reduce or eliminate the etronate formations that are happening, that typically happen in, in Portland cement. And by reducing the etronate formations and by having these, this very dense particle packing, you're able to produce a, a uh, a mix that also has very low porosity and also it's going to help improve with some of the other factors like creep and, and, uh, and durability. And then right here you can see that we have a, a compression test that we're going to look at. So a compression test is, is vital while looking at uh, concrete. So the, the ultimate strength of a compression test is typically used and a lot of the other properties of concrete are derived off of the compression strength of concrete. Uh, there's formulas to relate that back to the tensile strength, flexural strength, and modulus. So looking at the properties of normal concrete versus UHPC, you can see that there's a significant improvement going from about 26 to 33 KSI for the ultra high performance concrete. Typical concrete is, is only uh, four to six or four to eight KSI for the compressive strength. And you're gonna see that also in the in the flexural strength and the in the modulus, there's also significant increases. And the stress strain, strain curve right here kind of shows the uh, the gap, the difference between how the ultra high performance concrete compares to your normal concretes. Concrete in general is divided into two parts. There's filler which contains the aggregates, and then the binder, which is made up of mostly Portland cement. In normal cement, the aggregate represents about 70% of the mixture. Ultra-high performance concrete, on the other hand, has a smaller aggregate composition because it uses very fine aggregates such as sand, quartz, limestone, and silica fume. The use of these finer aggregates means that there's a relatively high amount of the binder being used, adding to the expense, but also the strength of the material. Thin steel fibers in UHPC that are about a centimeter long and a fifth of a millimeter thick also reinforce the concrete and help to make it slightly more ductile. The finer aggregates in the mix allow for a greater packing density and make the mix more homogeneous. Additionally, when mixed with water, calcium silicate molecules in the Portland cement undergo a hydration reaction that forms calcium silicate hydrate, which contains silicate chains that are important to the strength of the concrete. Similar to how polymer chains increase strength in polymer compounds, longer silicate chains and calcium silicate hydrate increase the strength of the concrete. UHPC is also distinguished by the already mentioned steel fibers, which make up about 6.2% of the material by weight and help make it slightly more ductile and resistant to stress by deforming in place of the concrete itself. UHPC has significantly better mechanical behavior than regular concrete, retaining much of its tensile strength even after cracks first start forming. 
In addition to an elasticity modulus two to four times higher than traditional concrete and a compressive strength of up to 200 megapascals, UHPC is significantly more resistant to fatigue. In lab tests, a concrete girder being tested for use in highway bridges was able to withstand 12 million load cycles without significant fatigue degradation or change in overall mechanical behavior. To give you an idea of this, throughout the 12 million cycles that were exerted on the girder, its mechanical behavior essentially remained only within the multi-cracking region of the curve that's pictured on the slide. As for the diffusive properties, UHPC is also less permeable than regular concrete. Chlorine, which can diffuse into concrete and break it down over time, is an important concern for engineers. So the coefficient of diffusion of chlorine, which is only 2 times 10 to the negative 15th meter squared per second, is a very small coefficient and helps to make the material resistant to chlorine diffusion. This very small coefficient of diffusion is due largely in part to the dense matrix that is in UHPC. The benefits of UHPC include, but are not limited to, high frost, salt, and chloride resistance, high compressive strength, higher tensile strength, increased durability, and low repair and maintenance cost. Overall, these attributes allow UHPC to outlast many other types of normal concrete, especially in outdoor environments. The following graph compares several characteristics of UHPC to those of normal concrete. In each case, UHPC significantly outperforms normal concrete. These properties allow for many alterations in possible structural designs not possible before with the use of standard concretes. Such applications could lower the amount of overall concrete needed in a project, leading to lower costs for many real-world designs. As with any new material, Many liabilities may discourage the use of UHPC, despite its desirable properties, as this material has had limited testing and actual employment in structural design. Therefore, many legal obstacles, such as patent, restric patent restrictions and design sharing, may impede its introduction to many possible applications. The limited availability of guidelines for the use of UHPC in construction and structural design may also impede its expansion into the design community. Additionally, UHPC has a high initial cost when compared to normal concrete, which, coupled with training and educational costs, could be avoided by using standard concrete may further decrease its desirability. Although ultra-high performance concrete is a useful advancement in technology, the production of UHPC is constrained by the materials needed to create the mix. Concrete is a mixture of cement, aggregates, and water. The primary strength of concrete is mostly due to the quality of the aggregate. UHPC requires the strongest aggregates such as fine quartz, silica, fume, and admixtures, whereas normal concrete makes use of simply sand, coarse, and fine rock and admixtures. The use of more refined and higher grade aggregates makes UHPC more expensive and requires shipment from non-local resources. Because of these limitations, UHPC is not widely used yet and may require some changes before it becomes viable for job sites. For UHPC to be improved and further expanded in the design community, more general information regarding the material must be introduced to a larger general audience. Such information includes long-run cost-effectiveness analysis, generalized material specifications, and overall design applications and guidelines. Additionally, further research could be conducted to determine ways of modifying current production methods of UHPC to use local or regional materials, as opposed to more expensive quartz materials used from distant locations. Overall, this would allow the use of UHPC to expand farther in its application while maintaining a low cost, a great incentive for any firm contemplating the use of the material.